Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we find ourselves on Twitchy's Tremendous Trojan. That's the name of the asteroid I gave, uh, sorry, the name I gave to this asteroid. Uh, as you can see from the title screen here, Clay have decided that they're going to push back their launch date by about a month. I'm fine with this because we are just carrying on with whatever the system is that they have. I'm not sure what we're expecting from the, from the new release. Maybe there's some more biomes, maybe there's some more buildings, maybe there's more research to do. I don't know. We may have to like restart the map. Let me go know down below what you guys think. Should we start a new colony for a new release? Or the actual release? Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. Anyway, today we are going around. We are having a look at the pro at the problems that we have. As always, we start the adventure with a little bit of maintenance. I want to make sure that these uh, petrol power is working here. And I'm looking. I'm looking strong and hard at the carbon dioxide filter on the right-hand side there. Something doesn't seem right, and I cannot figure out what it is. I start off by clearing out all the water. Maybe, just maybe, it's flooded out. But no, that turns out to not be the case. And the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, this whole area is getting flooded with carbon dioxide. We need to fix that. Maybe we can make a bit of, a bit of an extra room. The first thing I am going to actually do is get rid of all that slime so we're not worrying about polluted oxygen. Also, we seem to have some other problems just kicking around in various places, like our um, oxygen production up at the top of by the base seems to be having some serious issues. One of the issues that I'm trying to sort out now with the priorities is the fact that nobody seems to be going around and doing any tidying. It turns out that everybody who has a skill in the tidying dimension has uh, a lot of other things that they like to do as well. So to try and fix this, I'm going to induce a state of red alert. I, I can't see any way of this backfiring onto our duplicates, but the more that I'm spending here, the more time that I'm spending in red alert, looking and wondering where everyone's errands are, the more I'm like, maybe I don't have any gold amalgam that is in a reachable place for people or anything like that. So let's go through and change all our build orders to stop using gold amalgam. We seem to be getting a lot of iron recently, so we're going to go and work with that. Though, honestly, we need to start thinking about some serious, serious uh, mining practices sending people out to the depths right Travaldo our big mistake we're gonna have to try and do uh, something about him and of course we're gonna try honor honoring his men memory with a memorial next to the toilet that actually did the job that Travaldo was supposed to be doing I mean that's that's pretty cool right that is pretty cool coming back to the uh, oxygen production we are gonna be having some serious problems if I do not sort this issue out so we're gonna have to get on it right now the big pro biggest problem is of course the fact that the uh, electrolyzers that were already there are no longer working because they got broken because for some reason some dodgy water got pushed in there i don't know how it happened uh but obviously polluted water got in there uh, another round of issues that we've got is what skills do we give people the only one that i know for definite what i want to do with is mad frank because we want to make sure that he is space cadet ready uh everybody else i'm just kind of giving them the jobs that they love or seeing if there's anything um sort of far down the research tree that they could end up wanting like looking down uh, the skill sets being like okay well wise probably wants to be a mechanic engineer so let's try and sort that out and things like this the water down below coming out of the steam geyser i really need to try and do something with it i need an active cooling system that's not a problem for today though maybe i actually should have made it a problem for today instead i'm fixating on the fact that these atmospheric suits are not getting enough oxygen for them so we're going to try and make everything work over on this side so we're literally just working on the oxygen production my first priority is to get the one that is already there back up and running i'm not entirely certain why the repair is not being uh, fixed but of course Tommy our man might actually just come along and do that for us I couldn't find out where the uh, the input of the bad water was so well, we're just gonna have to make do on what we've got it is all being pumped out of our main water tank so obviously something got dropped in there at some point maybe someone made a little bit of a mess uh, they really shouldn't have made a mess because the uh, water tank on the right is kind of set up to have no way in for that sort of thing uh, we're also gonna send another oxygen line coming in to kind of just be a dedicated the uh, oxygen lines that go into the atmospheric suits at the moment they also go through and feed to the rest of the base as you can see in this lovely little setup that i'm showing you here um, but what we want to do is try and make it um so that one of these oxygen producing units feed the atmospheric suits and then one goes off to do the base and the other airlock of atmospheric suits because of course we do have uh, a whole airlock on the right hand side one of the big problems that is happening uh, is that a lot there's little bits of carbon dioxide and bad oxygen getting inside here whilst we are fixing the area so i was like you know what 
it's time to bite the bullet. We really have to get the, uh, a filter put on there. We've got almost infinite power running around the base, so it's not really anything that we have to worry about too much. Uh, but of course, where we're going to end up putting these gases is also a bit of a problem. So far, I've just been venting my waste gases into sort of the communal hallways and stuff. Obviously, never into the actual base itself. But when people are moving around inside atmospheric suits, I, d I don't see the need uh, to put, uh, put the waste gases anywhere else, to be fair. I mean, really, what we should be doing is taking them to, like, the outer edge of a map somewhere. Um, we could quite easily just take them all the way off to the left uh, and then sort out all the gases, process them, and then take them to wherever they need to be. It could be a thing. We'd probably end up with a very, very large container of carbon dioxide and chlorine, uh, and we'd end up scrubbing all the polluted oxygen or something like that. But you can see the issue that I am having here. Every time that the oxygen flows up from the bottom, some goes to the left, some goes to the right, some goes up the middle. It's about a third each. It's almost exactly a third split each. Uh, and that's not really doing very well for providing oxygen for the atmospheric suits. So doing wonders for the base. Absolute wonders for the base. No good for the suits. But you can see that both, um, both, all of the oxygen providers here are actually having a little bit of a bad time keeping themselves separated just using a uh, good old gravity. Or I suppose it's a Coriolis effect on the... Uh, on the asteroid, isn't it? We uh, we get gravity here because of the spin. I mean, actually, if you stop and think about it and uh, like try and figure out where things are, we're actually spinning in the wrong direction or being pulled in the wrong direction or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very crazy. It can't actually be Coriolis effect, despite the fact that the heavier gases drop down and right. And the reason that it can't be is because space is up. And if that was because of the spin, that's the way things would fall. Surely. Anyway, we're getting back to doing the filters. Uh, more importantly, getting around to moving Travalgo to his final resting spot. We're going to take a, a little bit of time here as each of our duplicants come in one by one and mourns the fact that their overseer is a bit of a bad man. Someone who would rather trade a duplicant's life for a morbs to try and just keep the mushrooms growing to keep everybody else alive. I mean, it, it was a reasonable decision that was made at the time, but now in hindsight, uh, we can see the folly of it all. Uh, whilst we're here though, what we're gonna do is try and move that slime law up from uh, up above there, down below, and try and like compact the room the room a little bit because uh, we, we don't need it to be this big. Uh, for not only for making the rooms into whatever we want, uh, but also like we might need more space at some point. There's a whole reason Reason, um, to a whole bunch of reasons that we should compactify. So I am slowly starting to trace all of my lines around and having a look at the different uh, icons on here. And, and still, I'm not quite sure what's going on with my carbon dioxide scrubber there. What I'm going to do is try and cut the uh, the water pump just just to see if maybe the water pump is putting into the into the pipeline and it's uh, it's not quite. Uh, leaving enough room for the oxygen scrubber to push out. I mean, obviously something's going on because there was a whole load of water in the pipe, right? For those of you that are ahead of me already, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know it's going to be painful. It, it was painful for me when I realised. <laughs> Anyway, we're into the oxygenator on the bottom left there. You can see that I actually knocked out a little bit of a wall. I oh, was just making sure that the uh, airlock on the right-hand side... Do you remember that airlock that I talked about just a second ago? Uh, yeah, just making sure that all the, uh, the atmospheric suits are actually delivered to where they need to be. But yes, if you look here on the left-hand side, I took out a wall. That's because we have no way of actually sensing the atmospheric pressure down there, and we definitely need to uh, get on that. I keep having a look at my research, but the problem that we have with the research is that the uh, high-level research station the uh, the computer requires water and uh, my water it's not it doesn't flow quite fast enough we're doing fairly well but it's not flowing fast enough we're pumping water in when it's uh, far too hot into the base we're like trying to just catch up all the time and i really need to do something to um to cool down the water that we're getting from the steam geyser. I'm going to have to think long and hard about that. As I say, it's not a problem that we come up with, uh, that we uh, face today, but it really probably should have been. Anyway, moving on, we really need to get this, this set of tiles made on this side, and I'm starting to uh, realise that I, I keep making a lot of mistakes with the materials that I'm asking the duplicates to use. I'm not entirely sure how it's happened, but we have a very segregated asteroid. In fact, I do know exactly how it's happened, but we've got the left-hand side where almost everything's 
seems to be working. We've got our base in the middle, and then we've got the right-hand side, which is kind of like for water production and, and processing and stuff like that. And somehow we've made it so that all the equipment, all the items are being stored inside the base. And the only way that people can get the items to build the stuff on the left-hand side is to go to the major storage areas, which means putting an atmospheric suit on and off, which means that a lot of the time when people go and do that, they end up not being able to get back out of the lock. Therefore, they can't get the, the uh, materials that they want out of our base uh, and nothing ever ends up getting worked. I hope that kind of makes sense in your head. Uh, because of the airlock, we aren't able to get materials out of the base. Uh, so I have to start thinking very hard about what materials are actually local around. I say very hard. I just got to like, take a moment to look. But you can also see that we're starting to get a little bit of... Um, a situation where people are being uh, being idle and I don't like that the fact that we've got people being idle tells me that we've got a little bit of a problem going on uh, we don't have what well, the, the the major overriding problem is we don't have enough uh, ways of people coming in and out of the base the base permeability is not strong enough so instead of trying to solve all these issues I thought that I would send ZTech up to space let's go and have a look we've been here for time enough now trying to figure out how we are going to break this seal and I thought right that's it now is the time we're just going to find out what happens if we uh, dig out. For some reason, he decided that it was very important to get that, that tile dug there. I, I don't quite understand the workings of the Jukut's brain sometimes. But given the point that we are in the day cycle, maybe he was actually smarter than me and was like, well, I'll just do this quick job back towards the base as I make my way home. Maybe he was pre-planning. That, that's something that I've never seen the duplicates do before, but that doesn't mean that it never actually happened. So we've got a bit of a weird situation in the new atmospheric area there. You can see that there is an automation wire in the very top left next to the pump that for some reason can't be reached unless the door is open, uh, which means that when the door is closed, the duplicates don't know to make it a job. Uh, anyway, Shrautica's coming along and clearing up the uh, top of space here. There's a little bit of a water trapped in a little pocket there. I'd like to see what happens if we expose that to the vacuum of space. I'm guessing it will very quickly sublimate away, but you know, what What can we do but try? Okay, so all duplicates going around and doing the oxygen provider on the left. Um, the tiles on the left of the production facility on the left, I'm a little bit like, do I even need those there? Uh, it is a very much an enclosed space, so maybe it will just work out fine as it is. Also, we've had these uh, tidy orders going around the base for an awful long time and they just haven't been gone, gone and had a look at. I think the majority of the reasoning behind this is because of the lack of oxygen. You can see that we've got four atmospheric suits that are just not being used up there, uh, which means that we're only getting about half the number of duplicates through that we should actually be technically getting and hopefully this will fix that. One thing that I've always found a little bit weird is the way that the duplicates always seem to want to come in from a job from up on top. Uh, I don't know why they want to do this. I presume it's something to do with the parving length or something like that uh, but it does mean that every now and then I've got to be just a little bit more conscious of uh, which doors are open and which doors are closed because obviously I don't want the gases from the corridor mixing with the pure hydrogen at the top of the production facility. Uh, I, I know that you know troubles seem to be happening anyway and maybe we need to change some numbers on these things but look that that opening of the uh, opening of the door there very much dropped a load of chlorine through. Now the problem we've got with the chlorine there is it was pumped out when the left hand side wall got broken through so we could put the atmospheric pressure down at the bottom uh, but there's only one tile gap down at the bottom and there is a little bit of liquid in there you can probably see that so the chlorine just has nowhere to flow nowhere to flow whatsoever and uh, I didn't actually notice that until literally right now the little bit of liquid so it turns out that that's just gonna stay there Hmm, okay. <laughs> Alright, coming back to this uh, carbon scrubber, I'm just looking over and being like, I have no idea why this isn't going well. We've got got the, the, the output here, the, the bad water seems to be flowing out towards the bad water. I, uh, no, I, I don't know, I don't know. We're going to try and clear this little area out here and may, maybe take the water out another way. Maybe there's a bit of a, a pressure issue. This is the th things that I'm thinking about here. So let's let's take this bad water outlet and put it in through the bottom of the slime to see what would happen there, the slime distilleries, uh, because, of course, this is all one uh, enclosed bad water loop. Uh, a few uh, things need to be done, such as putting a dig order on the left-hand side of all those slimes. Those slimes should probably have been dug out a lot before now but it turns out that uh, given the orders wrong and people couldn't get to it there was some algae blocking their their access routes which obviously was a um, bit of a problem 
bit of a problem, but you know, as soon as those jobs are sorted out and everything is sorted properly, the uh, the Jupiters just know what to do. They're, they're very good like this. Okay, we're going to start sorting out some pressures here, but my main problem is thinking about all the different types of gas that are in there. Now, we put down filters for the majority of them, but the hydrogen is still an unfiltered output. I should probably fix this and make it a filtered output, but I, it's, it's practically a waste gas, so I don't really care all that much. But I've said it before, and I will say it again. Almost every time I load up this game, I feel like I need to change these atmospheric settings to something completely different each time. Uh, it just... I say completely different. Within a couple of hundred kilograms per tile each time, it just uh, doesn't seem to want to work on the same standard settings throughout every every single game load, which uh, is a little weird. I would have thought that it would have been something that did function like that. But we're going to put the priority of that gas bridge up, and we're going to have everything connected together on the same system now. We've got the two oxygen lines going into the atmospheric suits, and this should all fingers crossed start providing enough oxygen for everything to go through you can even see the oxygen that is coming on in from along the bottom is now going along repressurizing the base repressurizing the atmospheric suits in the right hand airlock and hopefully this should mean everything starts to flow a little bit better now time to start turning my attention to the water flow just a little bit just a little bit we're having uh, some serious troubles here and then I get distracted. Distracted by the carbon dioxide scrubber again. I really just, I'm just gonna sit here and think about it for a while. Maybe go around, do a little bit of the small jobs, start thinking about what's gonna happen when we get down to the lower levels. There's some neutronium I saw in the uh, in the gas there, in the, uh, the fog of war, sorry. Uh, I couldn't see any geyser on top of it, but we need to try and do something about that. I noticed some polluted oxygen in the base, so I'll just put a scrubber down just so we can deal with that as well. And then I find that the power control station is a thing, and it's time start thinking about how we can upgrade uh, our little areas here now i got a feeling before i even start putting stuff down that uh, the rooms are starting to get a little bit too large so i've got to got to start thinking about how i can rearrange things but the, the main big problem that i've actually got is that the heavy watt wires cannot pass through tiles so i've got to build up a secondary system before i put the first uh, before i can put the first system down uh, and it's all going to be uh, wonders from there uh, thinking about the carbon dioxide scrubber because we just had a look at it it turns out that some of the ladders were down on too low a priority so to get the secondary line in, I had to uh, put the priority up on that and we need to wait for them to start digging that but of course the fact that we are digging out the uh, the power lines the power room sorry also means that it's going to be a bit of a problem uh, I need to drop the atmospheric pressure sensor down a little bit because we've got uh, some small waste gases some small amounts of chlorine on the bottom and obviously once the pump has pumped out the majority of the chlorine there's not actually enough to keep to trigger the atmospheric sensor uh, I let that run for a little while until I'm happy that it is back to flowing oxygen look at the look at the suit make sure nothing uh, bad is happening and I'm thinking about whether like, I need to turn that back up at all uh, it's a silly plan because yes I really did need to turn that back up uh, but I was spending a lot of time thinking about it just in case I'm also noticing there's um, some iron ore in there that I didn't notice when I was putting the base together so maybe that is something that I uh, need to go and dig back out to put some insulated tiles in or something like that so we got uh, Captain Sub, Shroudkus and Zedtech all coming along and building that secondary water line I'm not sure if it's uh, fully connected yet, but it's starting to feel good. A little pufflet on the uh, on the welcome there. And every time that I get the uh, the printer now, uh, I'm just going to be trying to get, get animals or food or some resource. Uh, maybe at some point we will want a few more duplicates. I feel like we can support maybe two or three more duplicates with what we've got going, but the water is a big problem there. It is a big, big problem, as always. It's, it's the... For me, the big challenge in the game. I know a lot of people are actually like, well, I think you'll find that actually the disease is the big challenge in the game. And I'm like, well, actually, I'm, I'm all over the disease. I've got no problem there. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that is wonderful about this game is there's lots of different areas that some people can excel at and other people can excel at. Oh, I hit my microphone. <laughs> I was going to edit that out, but you know what? It sounds pretty good. I'll leave it there. So looking at the kitchen, you can see that none of the, uh, the kitchen appliances are working. This is actually a good thing because if we actually look on the right-hand side, you can see edible it's about five or six I don't know, I'm not gonna count it but many up from the uh, the bottom it's like 72,000 calories our food um, food 
stocks keep on going up. So this is good. This this means we can definitely support extra duplicates if we do that, but it also means that our duplicates are not going to starve. That is kind of the big important thing there. Watching the morning roll through, we can see the people immediately get on the composting, start sorting out the uh, the water on the right hand side. You can see that we also replaced all the ladders with plastics in here. I'm not sure if this is actually done our decor up uh, in any appreciable manner, but it'll be interesting to find out. Looking the way that we have, I've just realised that the right hand side airlock gets completely saturated. Um, all the all the suits get moved out before the, the morning is done. So maybe that's something we need to uh, apply ourselves to uh, later. But right now, I really need our duplicates to come over to this power plant and start taking out some of the old wires. You can see that we've got secondary wire line going in underneath that one that we're trying to remove. But for some reason, all the duplicates seem to want to do is turn the petrol power over, which I'm kind of okay with. I've got no real problem with that, but I would really like it if they could. Just, just, just come along and do this. It turns out that the reason they did not was because I had very low priorities on all of them and my entire base runs on something around priority seven. So we're going to have to try and sort that out. It started off with all good good intentions as it does, pushing up a few of my uh, life support systems up just to make sure that we never die because, you know, that always seems like a good idea, making sure people don't die. Um, but uh, but the, the path to hell is laden with good intentions, right? Pay for good intentions. Uh, that That's a thing. Uh, and we have been very much found ourselves in high priority hell right here. We are having trouble getting anything done if we are not putting it up at the priority nine, which means at some point we're going to have to go through and just kind of like drag a five across the entire thing. So you remember that carbon dioxide scrubber and that line of water that I put uh, going up the opposite direction? Doesn't seem to be working. I know idea why. I mean, I, I obviously post-editing Twitchy know exactly what's wrong. Uh, but at the time, I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's not backing up with water. Let's just leave that running and see if we can do anything with that. Uh, the problem that we've got, you can see that the power control unit, it's got a little icon beneath it. It's saying that there is a problem, and I can tell you the problem is that there is too much room. There, uh, the, the room is too big. So we're going to start, like, compacting this area down. I didn't really actually mean to do it on the red alert settings, but as it was there, I was like, alright, fine, we'll, we'll We'll just accept that as it is. The main reason being that we wanted to try and get this running as quickly as possible. Uh, but it turns out that the people that can do both uh, both delivering and building don't want to do both delivering and building. They just want to do the delivering. I'm going to let the duplicates sleep for the night. It's unfair running them through on nothing but red alert. Of course, when the day of reckoning comes and our judgment comes to us all, I'm hoping that the fact that I let the duplicates sleep overnight kind of masks over the fact that I sacrificed one of them for polluted oxygen? Question mark? But anyway, we are coming along and putting some more tiles down. I'm having a look at the building that we've actually got here, and I'm like, mm, I can definitely squeeze this all in a little bit more. So let's try and do that, shall we? I can put a couple of tiles up the top to try and restrict the area, but I'm, I'm feeling that an entirely new plan is needed. Indeed, we're going to put another power line coming up and out the top there so that we can move the old power line and start thinking about where we're going to put the actual uh, power control unit. I think that's what this new guy's called. Uh, basically, what happens is your, your, your top dude, your top hombre, moves on in there and starts making himself some microchips, which then get distributed out to the generators to improve their efficiency. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that works, but it's the system that's in place, so it's the one that we're going to work with. You can see that I'm taking out a lot of power line now. That's because we, by doing this, can make a lot more room. And indeed, you will see that I'm going to move the power control unit just one tile over, but it is one tile enough. And it turns out that you can build the arm going into the wall. I don't think that is exactly how Clay wants to do it, and it's possibly one of the things that they wanted to tidy up to make, push the, re the release date back a little bit. I don't know, this sort of collision system does seem to be just a little bit broken. It's nothing really too much to worry about, you know, it's not like uh, duplicates are falling through the, mo through the floor or any of the mobs are disappearing or anything like that. Yeah, it's just occasionally a room, uh, a, a station appears to go through the wall of the room. And you can see just by doing that we actually managed to cram it all in there and it was still a generator room, a power room, um, by the definition of less than 128 tiles. We're going to be feeding in a lot of iron to this because, you know, the iron is the material that I've got extras of uh, and i'm starting to think where are we going to put extra skills for people we've got cubic here wanting an extra skill i end up just giving him an extra low level just in case we need to like swap his job around or anything like that i really should be um going for the full bore specialization everyone is only a specialist and nobody is doing uh, sort of the weird generalization because that is like the most efficient way but uh, uh you know duplicates like to do stuff have a wide range of skills right i i would like to make 
happy little duplicates, even if they're, they have got no actual happiness feedback routines whatsoever. I just, I feel like a bad overlord if I don't. And of course, the first rule of being a good overlord is that you have to feel good about what you're doing. If you don't feel good, how are your underlings supposed to feel good? And let's be honest, no one actually cares what the underlings feel like anyway. Okay, so these people are going around and doing the, the actual job here. Another three got a microchip done, and unfortunately, that is kind of the end of the microchip journey. For some reason, uh, no one actually wants to end up moving everything around. If I click and look in the database, there's nothing in the database. If I look in the wiki, there is nothing in the wiki. Ask on the forum, people just get sucked sarcastic at you. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with the microchip. I'm going to leave it on my uh, on my floor right there. Uh, looking at the stats from all the power energy outputs and stuff like that, nothing has happened just from merely making them. Uh, so something obviously needs to happen. I assume that a duplicate needs to come along and pick up the microchip and apply it to the generator. There's just no one seems to want to do that. All right, for one last thing, just to round up what we're doing here. So the oxygen scrubber um, had a bit of a problem all, all day with it, haven't we? Yeah, we, we have very much indeed. I thought there was uh, some serious problems with the output. It turns out, yeah, there kind of was a serious problem with the output. I, uh, I connected up the wrong pipes to the wrong side, so I was trying to suck in polluted oxygen and push out clean, and that's just not what the machine does. Uh, so, problem solved. You can see the water now flows from our very limited supply into the carbon scrubber, and that's going to spend some time all working through the, all the carbon dioxide that the petroleum generator had produced. It is a lot, but, you know carbon scrubbers are pretty good at that. We've got a little bit of a slime lung infestation in our cold tank, but that's not the end of the world because cold tank kills slime lung, so no problem. I'm going to spend a few minutes just having a look at my cooling options. Uh, I have a lot of water coming out of that, um, that cool steam geyser, and I thought that the cold biome might be good enough to kind of help chill it down. Turns out no, so I'm going to have to start making a more active cooling system. If you guys have a favourite active cooling system out there, do let me know down below because I really need to implement one. But I've run out of time. We've run out of an episode. We've done all these wonderful things. Expanded our base. Got the power running. Oh, wonders, wonders. Got some extra oxygen running. But I will see you next time when we're going to work on that water system. See you then when we're going to do that. Bye.